Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody? This is Joseph Collin coming to you with your AEW Dynamite review on a rare Thursday night, August 27th, 2020. And yes, before we get into the show, clearly there's something different about me. I'm clean shaved, man. I'm clean shaved. I'm all cleaned up. No beard, no mustache. I'm clean for now, but I'll be growing that shit back later. Don't worry, I'll be growing the beard back later. But <sighs> I just wanted to be a little funny there. But AEW tonight. AEW, really good show. Of course, really good show from AEW tonight. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for the two hours. It wasn't perfect. I really did not like the last two segments on the show, especially the women's handicap and the main event. We'll get to the main event. I didn't really like that as much. That was very uh, short, and I felt like they didn't get all their stuff in that they really wanted to. But besides that, this was a really good show. I enjoyed it, and... We're just nine days away from All Out. I saw people say, oh, look at that All Out card. That looks weak. No, it doesn't. The All Out card, it looks stacked like a normal AEW pay-per-view. And at the end of the day, the people who are saying, oh, it's weak and all of this. At the end of the day, you're going to buy it anyway. So, you know, just, just enjoy it. At, at least they're giving you good weekly television on TNT. That's all you can ask for it. As an AEW fan. But before we get into the Dynamite review tonight. I just need you guys to check out. Like I said on yesterday's review. Just check out a couple videos for me. Check out the SummerSlam review. Uh, this past Sunday. I need you to check that out. The Monday Night Raw review. Reached I believe over 150 views. Crazy. So... Thank you guys who tuned in to the Raw review this past Monday. That did some great numbers. And the NXT review from last night. We got a massive Fatal 4-Way Iron Man match next week for the NXT Championship. Uh, if you want my thoughts on NXT last night, very simple. Go check it out on the Big Fight Field channel. Let's start off with Dynamite. Which started off with the tag team gauntlet match where the winning tag team would go on to face FTR for the tag team championships at the All Out pay-per-view. The teams were the Natural Nightmares who were the fourth ranked team, the Young Bucks who were the third ranked team, the Best Friends who were the second ranked team, and FTR the number one ranked team. And it's simple. This is simple booking, and you know what, folks? It makes sense. Those are the top four contenders in the rankings for the AEW Tag Team Championships. You put those four tag teams in there in your gauntlet to see who becomes the number one contenders for the tag team titles. It makes sense. It's logical. And we don't get that a lot in the other company that I will not refer to tonight. But this is sense and it's logical. So we started off with the Bucks versus the Natural Nightmares. This was just an appetizer. Just a nice appetizer before the meal. And it was good. A good appetizer for this gauntlet match. Seven minutes. Natural Nightmares lose after the BTE trigger. To QT Marshall, D uh, Dustin Rhodes pulled off a Texas Destroyer. It's not a Canadian Destroyer. I believe Tony Schiavone called it a Texas Destroyer tonight on commentary. So we got a Texas Destroyer from Rhodes. Um, some good chemistry between the Young Bucks and the Natural Nightmares. Um, Young Bucks got the win. VT, uh, BTE trigger. Uh, Dustin tried to break it up. And Nick Jackson holds back Dustin. And the Natural Nightmares are the first team eliminated. Then out come the best friends, Trent and Chuck Taylor. Now, the Natural Nightmares, Young Bucks, 
was the appetizer. This was the full-on meal. This was a great tag team match between the Young Bucks and the best friends. Great action. This took most of the time in the tag team gauntlet. I believe it was about, I want to say close to 15 minutes. Young Bucks kept trying to put away the best friends and the best friends just would not quit. They kicked out at everything the Young Bucks gave them. Super kicks, knee strikes, um, a swanton from Nick Jackson. Trent and Chuck were kicking out at anything. And Chuck sold a knee injury in this match. And it comes to key in the next match. Which I probably just spoiled for you guys. Who wins this match. But you guys all know what happens. Hangman Page comes running down. The Bucks are getting ready to go for the uh, Melter Driver. Hangman Page holds on to Nick Jackson's ankle. Nick can't break up the pin. Chuck Taylor rolls up. I believe there's yeah. Chuck Taylor rolls up. Matt Jackson and the best friends defeat the Young Bucks. So they take the Young Bucks out of this match. And thanks to Hangman Page. The Young Bucks have been eliminated. Now, this is just simple, effective, great storytelling. It builds dissension between the elite members. And clearly, we saw that earlier in the night when Hangman was in the bar. Young Bucks inter interrupted. Mm -hmm. They threw beer at Hangman Page. And they told Hangman, you know what? You're out of the elite. They shut the door and the freaking glass of the door broke. And all you saw was Hangman looking furious. Looking furious in the glass door. Because he's kicked out. He is no longer a part of the elite. That is shocking. That's definitely going to come in factor at All Out. And I don't see Hangman Page turning heel. Because, quite frankly, he's too over as a babyface. If you turn Adam Hangman Page heel, that's not going to work. Fans are not going to boo Adam Hangman Page. That's just not going to happen. You have more of a better chance of having people boo Kenny Omega and having Kenny Omega get more heel heat than Adam Hangman Page. Kenny Omega should be the one who snaps and turns heel on Adam Page at all out. So then we get to the best friends versus the FT, F versus FTR, who comes out with Tully Blanchard, and this is the nice last fi last finish off the, the 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 dessert of this gauntlet match. FTR wins in about nine minutes. Uh, Dax Harwood puts a heel hook in on Chuck. Going back to the knee injury in the match with the Young Bucks. And Chuck taps out. And FTR are going to the all-out pay-per-view to challenge Kenny Omega and Adam Hangman Page for the Tag Team Championships. This was a really good gauntlet match. They told a great story with the detention of the Elite with Hangman and the Young Bucks. And I was very scared that the Young Bucks were... Going to beat the best friends. And we were going to get the Young Bucks versus FTR in the finals. And if that happened. I probably would have ran on the ran on this. Because that would have been so dumb. That would have been so dumb. If you just had the Bucks and FTR's first encounter with each other. On a random episode of Dynamite. And not on a big stage. You got to save that shit. For a big stage. For when we get a live audience. That's when. That's when. We're going to get the Bucks. Versus FTR. And. FTR. They're going to all out to, to face. Omega and Paige for the tag team titles. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the match of the night. I'm telling you right now. That's going to be a classic right there. Lance Archer. Defeated. Some jobber. I didn't get this guy's name because I, I don't think I was paying attention. 
Uh, he beat this jobber in five minutes, but there's a bigger story to tell after the match because Jake Roberts got on the microphone and he said at All Out, there will be 21 men in the ring, but only tw 20 of them will have the consequences and will have to seal their fate in the Casino Battle Royal. Then he and Jake Roberts asks Lance Archer, do you have what it takes? Are you bad enough to eliminate 20 other men in the Battle Royal at All Out? And Lance Archer says yes, because everybody in AEW knows that everybody dies. And then after that, Team Taz comes out. They got interrupted by Taz, Ricky Starks, and Brian Cage. And Taz got back and forth with Jake Roberts saying, my guys, uh, one of my guys, Ricky Starks or Brian Cage, are going to win the Battle Royal at All Out. And the winner is getting a shot at the world title, by the way. So, that's that. Out comes Darby Allen. Darby Allen does not come out through the entranceway. He comes out through the fans, I guess. And by the way, now that I just mentioned it, there were live fans tonight at AEW. 10% capacity. And man, it felt great. It felt great to have live fans Finally, in the audience. I don't care if it's 10%, 5%, 100%. We got fans in the audience. And you know what? Those 10% fans, they were loud. They were loud, all right. They were singing Chris Jericho's theme music, Judas, when he went out on commentary. And it brought a tear to my eye. Brought a tear to my eye. And then they were loud during the... Uh, Moxley MJF contract signing, which we'll get to next, believe me. I'm very tired, too. So, anyway, I just want to talk about the fans right there. It feels so great to have the fans back in AEW. They are the, they are the heart and soul of AEW. No question. No question at all. The fans are the heart and soul of AEW, no doubt. So then Darby rides out through the audience in a skateboard. He runs in the ring. He tackles Ricky Starks. And him and Ricky Starks, they start brawling up on the stage. They go to the back. Jake Roberts is holding back Lance Archer. And Taz is holding off Brian Cage. And the audience is chanting, let them fight, let them fight, let them fight. I mean, they want Brian Cage and Lance Archer to fight. I like that we're getting a casino battle royal at All Out. We got a casino ladder match at double or nothing. That wasn't really anything special. I hope this is better. I'm not really a fan of battle royals at all. But it should be fun. And the winner gets a shot at the world title. So, I mean, depending on the year outcome, between MJF and Moxley, we'll see who wins. We got the contract signing between MJF and the world champion, John Moxley. Challenger MJF, champion John Moxley. He said, well, I'm, I'm glad you show up, John, because now we're going to put the sign, your signature, on the paper that you can't use the paradigm shift at all out. I didn't take notes for all of this, but I took a note, some notes for for some of it. Uh, MJF said that John Moxley needed to watch his hairline with uh, the paradigm or whatever. He just said he needed to watch your hairline for some reason. I don't really know. I don't know why MJF said that. But then Moxley said, ha ha, ha ha ha, don't worry about it. Just hit puberty first. So he's telling MJF, hit puberty, man. That I laughed my ass off on that. That was funny. That was that was funny. And then Jim Ross saying, uh, when the Moxley got the big pop 
earlier when he came out. He got a big pop, probably got the biggest pop of the night. Uh, 10% fans were chanting Moxley during the segment. There were women standing up cheering for Moxley. And JR just randomly said, the women love John Moxley. And I laughed my ass off of that too. I just took a few notes for that. I ended up taking that as part of my notes. So that's what my paper says here. The women love John Moxley. So, I mean, Moxley's already got a woman himself. So he don't need to be looking for other women. So he's already got Renee, you know. And then um, MJF starts going over how Moxley's finishing move, the paradigm shift, is an abomination, and he's trying to break his neck. Could have ended his career. And then MJF tells a great story. He sa he says how Moxley is an outside wrestler. He's a garbage wrestler. He can't wrestle. He looked he he looked up to the guys like the Sandman, New Jack, um I forget another I, I know he mentioned Sandman and I know he mentioned New Jack, but I can't remember the other name. But he said I know where you want me to be, John. You wanna get me outside near the guard wheel, near the barricade, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna fall for that like your other opponents have. Cause that's your comfort zone. I'm not gonna get you in that comfort zone. I study wrestlers like Buddy Rogers and Bob Backlund and Tully Blanchard. So he name drop Tully Blanchard in there. And he says, I'm going to utilize every part of this ring. The turnbuckle, the ropes, the the mat, uh, the apron. I'm going to utilize every, every part of it. I'm going to have you stay in the ring. What you are, John, is you are a garbage wrestler who just wants to destroy and hurt people. And that's a great story. Because John Moxley is a diehard, hardcore wrestling fan. And he loves the hardcore, the deathmatch wrestling. And that's a great story to tell, in my opinion. And then he said, Once I get you in the ring and I embarrass you for the poor wrestler you are, you should go home and you should tell your wife, that I'm single. Then he st stands up, slaps the the de the table. Uh, the the lawyer, Mark Sterling, tells Moxley to sit down. Moxley says, "You don't really know what you're doing with this contract signing. With you banning the paradigm shift, I can get creative, different ways to break your bone." And I love that. I love that Moxley's. It's simple. This is so simple, folks. This is simple. Mox is like, okay, I can't use the paradigm shift. I'm going to figure out every creative aspect to make sure that I can break a bone and I can still beat you at all out. And he's got that real naked choke. He's got that chokehold that he used on, uh, what's his name? Bodie Lee. That he used on Brody Lee. And then Moxley signed the contract. Uh, the whole campaign team was yelling their ass off. They were like, yes, Moxley's an idiot. Why would you do this? You just gave yourself the L at All Out. Then the lawyer did not read the full contract. And some of the contracts said that next week, lawyer Mark Sterling... Would have to go one on one with MJF, and the paradigm shift is legal. And if Mark Sterling doesn't show up at Dynamite next week, MJF does not get the world title match at All Out. So, more than likely, Mark Sterling is going to show up and he's going to get dumped on his head. So, that should be cool. This was about the segment. Uh, this was probably the best thing on the show by far. Uh, this was awesome. Both guys were gold in this segment. MJF was amazing. Mark Sterling had a good role in this. John Moxley cut a great promo. I, I, the simple storytelling, man. 
I love it. MJF wants to be a guy who's inside the ring. He can, you control the match outside the inside the ring. John Moxley as a cage animal. He wants to go all over the place near the barricade, near the stage, near the commentary table. John Moxley is a garbage wrestler. MJF says, "I love it. It's simple storytelling, and it makes sense, and it's true." It's true. And I love the fact that Moxley said, I can get creative now that I can't use the paradigm shift. I'm going to figure out every way I can to break a bone in your body. I love it. I'm like, this is storytelling 101 right here. Yeah, it really is. This is storytelling 101 with John Moxley and MJF. And you know what? Since uh, about a month ago, they started this feud with the whole campaign speech by MJF. This has been great. This is probably my favorite feud in all of wrestling right now. And to match it all out. I feel like it's going to have that old school feel to it. I don't know. I just got a feeling that this match is going to be very old school. And I'm looking forward to I'm real. This is the match I'm looking forward to the most at all out. I'm telling you man. I'm telling you. And, and the good thing about it too is. I don't know who's going to win. You can make a point for MJF becoming the new AEW World Champion. And then you can make a point for John Moxley retaining the championship. It's fun. This is fun. I love it. I, I love this. I can't wait for the match at all now. Eight-man tag. We got the Lucha Bros. The Butcher and the Blade versus Joey Janela, Sonny Kiss, Griff Garrison, and Brian Pillman Jr. This was fun for what it was. Nothing much special. Just developing the new group of the Lucha Bros, the Butcher and the Blade, and uh, Eddie Kingston. And I saw a couple people mention this on social media. That AEW, they do eight-man tags every single week. And you know what? I'm like, hmm, you know what? The, the, those people are right. AEW, you can't, You just got to calm down. You got to calm down with the eight-man tags. Yes, I know tag team wrestling is a huge thing in AEW. Yes, AEW has the best tag team division in the world. But we don't need to be seeing these eight-man tags every single week. You can tone it down to maybe once every two weeks or once a month. Save those... Save those big tags for like a stadium stampede situation or an elite versus dark order situation. We don't need to be seeing these eight man tags every single week. We don't. It's unnecessary and it's an overkill. The matches are fun, yes, but we don't need to be seeing eight man tags every week. And we got another one next week too, so I mean we got that to look forward to. That's a, with a fun stipulation, too. So then Eddie Kingston gets on the microphone. He said, next Saturday, there's a pay-per-view on, on BR Live. We got this Casino Battle Royal. Myself, Ray, Pentagon, The Blade, and The Butcher... We'll all be in that Casino Battle Royal. And I can guarantee you that one of us will walk out the new number one contender for the AEW World Championship. So now in that Battle Royal, we got Darby, Lance Archer, Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, The Butcher, The Blade, The Lucha Bros, Eddie Kingston, and there's 12 more spots. This could be a really fun match at All Out. And I hope this is on the main card. Not the buy-in, and I'll get to what should be the buy-in match at All Out later on. So, or actually, it's coming up soon. So, we'll talk about it after this segment. But we got the TNT Championship celebration from Mr. Brody Lee. The Dark Order's theme music played. Uh, out came Cole Cabana first. Then they did the old GIF on Twitter. Do you guys know the GIF? Where we have six guys carrying around a casket and they walk around like this. Well, the Dark Order 
they had a casket. They were holding it up with one arm. And Stu Grayson led the charge. And they were walking like this. I love it, man. It was funny. Dark Order are finally... They're finally showing some personality in themselves. And that's what's going to make them a good group. The personality. They didn't. They had zero. They had zero charisma and zero personality when Mr. Brody Lee was not there. When Brody Lee was there with the Dark Order, the Dark Order have been so much better with Brody Lee there. And then the Dark Order, they welcome... The new TNT champion, Mr. Brody Lee. Uh, everybody goes to give Brody a high five. Alex Reynolds high fives Brody Lee. John Silver misses. Uh, I was laughing at that. I don't know if you guys caught that. But John Silver went to go high five Brody Lee. And he missed completely. And I was like, LOL. That was hilarious. And then Stu Grayson gave him a hug. Cole Cabana shook his hand. He hugged Alan Angels. He hugged 10. And then they went to the ring. He was accompanied by Anna J as well. The newest member of the Dark Order, Anna J. And Brody Lee said that he told Cody that he would leave him the old TNT Championship. And he would take his new TNT Championship. And that's exactly what he did. Dark Order, they're now at the top of AEW. They are in the destruction of AEW. And then he told Cody, wherever you are in your hospital bed, you can kiss the TNT Championship Open Challenge. Goodbye. Your indie wrestlers are not getting a chance at the TNT Championship against me. And it makes sense. This is a, a, a Championship Open Challenge. Does not fit a heel. It only fits a baby face. So not doing the TNT Championship Open Challenge. Uh, it, it makes sense. With Brody Lee as the champion, it makes a lot of sense. And the next time we see it, it'll probably be when a baby face is the champion. So Brody Lee comes at, uh, Brody Lee says, no more TNT Championship Open Challenge. And then the Natural Nightmares theme music hits. Out comes Dustin. Out comes QT Marshall. They get laid out by the Dark Order. They get laid out by the Dark Order. Then out comes Scorpio Sky. He tries to help. He gets laid out. And then Brody Lee brings back Anna Jay and Cole Cabana because they don't want he don't want them to see the destruction that's about to happen in the ring. But then Evil Uno standing Right near the casket all by himself. We see somebody standing on the baby face aisle way. Matt Cardona comes running out. And he gives. Evil Uno. A rough rider. Or I don't know what he calls it now. But. He gave him the rough rider. The finisher name in WWE. Then all of a sudden the natural nightmares in Scorpio Sky. They get up. They start brawling with the Dark Order. Uh, Brody Lee comes out at the end of the segment, and he stares down Matt Cardona. And I originally thought that we were going to get Matt Cardona versus Brody Lee for the TNT Championship at All Out, but it seems like we did not go that route. Instead, we went on a different route, which I'll get to after I talk about this match. This was by far the worst thing on the show. This sucked. We got Big Swole. Versus Penelope Ford, Rebel, and an injured Britt Baker. Britt Baker got on the microphone and she said, Since you're all outnumbered, I'll give you an advantage. If you can win this match against these three, against us three, you can have my match with me at All Out, and I'll allow you to pick any stipulation that you want. So Big Shrove runs through these Penelope Ford and Rebel in about five minutes. She's screaming. Swole's dancing in the ring. Kid Sabian gets knocked out by Swole. This sucked. This sucked. And I know we're getting a great women's match at All Out for the Women's Championship with Hikaru Shida and Thunder Rosa, which is a match that I am really 
looking forward to at All Out. But segments like these, segments like this, are why people are complaining about the AEW Women's Division online. And it does, it sucks. But at the same time, it's true. Because these people have the right to call out shitty segments like this. And this was a shitty segment. This was not necessary. I don't know why we need to add a stipulation to Big Swole and Britt Baker. I don't know why we needed to see this match. Couldn't we just announce the match and move on from there? And just wait for the match at All Out? That would have been so much better than having to see this garbage. This sucked. This was not good. At all. Big Swole wins. She picks a stipulation against Britt Baker. I expect she picks a stipulation uh, at All Out. And I think that match should be on the buy-in over the Casino Battle Royal. We got a couple of match, announcement, net match announcements for next week's Dynamite and a few matches for All Out on September 5th. Next week, Dynamite, we're going to get John Moxley versus Mark Sterling. Like I said, the paradigm shift is legal. And if Mark Sterling doesn't show up, MJF does not get the shot at the World Championship. I'm sure Mark Sterling will be there next Wednesday on Dynamite. Dynamite's on Wednesday, by the way, next week. NXT is on Tuesday. And that's another thing I want to mention before we get to the match announcements and the main event. Life is so much easier with AEW and NXT on separate nights. Like, having to watch AEW... Like, say on a Thursday night, by itself, everybody's tweeting about AEW in the wrestling community. It just feels so good. And then NXT last night, everybody was tweeting about NXT. There was no AEW. Again, it, it feels so good. Life is easier. There's no bickering in the community on Wednesday night. And there's no bickering on Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock. When the ratings come out and like, oh, AEW won the ratings. Oh, NXT won the ratings. I can't stand that shift. It's like seven and five-year-olds bickering over each other for uh, who's going to get the last chocolate bar at a candy store. Like, stop. Stop it. But I just wanted to mention that I love the fact that the past two weeks we have gotten... AEW and NXT on separate nights. Life is so much easier. I don't have to wait until the day after to review NXT. I can review it right when the show goes off the air. And I have no worry. Now this week NXT is on Tuesday. Because they're being preempted for the NHL playoffs. And AEW is on its own next Wednesday. So those are two big shows next week as well. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So anyway, for the match announcements, we're getting Best Friends versus Santana and Ortiz next week on Dynamite. I thought this would be announced like a false Count Anywhere stipulation, but no. Jay just said Best Friends versus Santana and Ortiz, which I was kind of shocked by. We're getting Chris Jericho versus Joey Janela. And then we're getting another eight-man tag because, you know... Overkill in the eight-man tags. We're getting Private Party and SCU versus the Young Bucks and the Jurassic Express. The winning tag team will go on to face each other in a tag team match at All Out. And I like that stipulation because we could be seeing the, Buc the Bucks versus the Jurassic Express in a tag team match at All Out. And that could be a really, that could be a solid Opening tag team match to All Out. That could be a good opening match to All Out. And I wouldn't mind that happening at all. Main event. The main event. 9.51 when this match started. I really didn't care about this that much. Matt Hardy versus Sammy Guevara in a tables match. After the show went over, I went off the air. I knew in my head. This match should have been on All Out next Saturday. They would have got more stuff in. They would have been more creative with this. Uh, a bunch of tables broke when Sammy dove onto a table. 
that he didn't break to Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy dove onto a table. And then at the end, Matt Hardy stacked a chair underneath the table. And Sammy suplexed him through the table. And that was kind of it. And then you hear Orange Cassidy's theme music. He sprints to the announcer table. And he takes out Chris Jericho and Cassidy and Jericho brawl. And that's the way Dynamite went off the air. Now, the brawl was good. Cassidy running to the commentary table, attacking Jericho like that. That was fantastic. That was awesome. The match itself, the match, I really didn't care about it. Right when I knew this match started at 9.51, this match went six minutes. And half of it was during the commercial, so why would I care about a match that's half the way during the commercial? And it should have been saved for the pay-per-view. This feud's personal enough that you could put this on all out. And I wouldn't be and I wouldn't complain about it. But that's just my personal opinion. This should have been on all out. That was your dynamite review. Like I said, man, really good show tonight. Uh outside of the last two segments. Everything else I really liked on the show. Uh, really good show. And next week's the go-home show before All Out. Can you believe it? Can you guys believe that Tuesday is going to be September 1st? That's unbelievable. School starts in two weeks. I can't believe that. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting out of here tonight. I want to thank you guys for watching this AEW review here on the channel. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button, man. I got a goal. I want to get to 190 subscribers before payback on Sunday. So we can get just three subs before payback on Sunday. I would appreciate that. Comment down below. I want to know your thoughts on tonight's AEW review. Like the video if you enjoyed what I had to say on tonight's AEW Dynamite. Follow me on Twitter at Colin underscore Joseph. And I will not. Be doing a SmackDown review tomorrow night. I'm not doing a SmackDown review tomorrow night. I'm going to be doing payback predictions on Saturday to upload for you guys. And then Sunday night will be the payback review here on the channel. So that's that. I'm getting out of here. Have a good night. Stay safe.